Okay, hands up, hands up, hands up! It is time for Math Minutes! And I'm sorry to do this to you guys again this week, but I got on my treadmill before I got on here and I refused to like uh, videotape while super sweaty because it gets super cold in my apartment. So, no. I took a shower, my hair is wet, you'll just live with it. I have faith in your ability. Now, we are at Math Minute 72. We are ready to get started. Let's pull it down. And we're gonna move the movies over just a little bit so that we got a little bit more room. So I fit five on here today. That's not bad, that's pretty good in fact. Yeah, there we go. Now we have ourselves some marker situation. So we got four because I have, this is our first video of the week. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start with money. I'm gonna start with green. I'm gonna take my cap, boop. I'm gonna put it back here so that I don't play with it because <laughs> that is definitely something I'm known to do. So let's look at our problems. Our first problem today, is 52 times 10 squared. So just so you guys can see it better, 52 times 10 squared. Now, if you put this into photo math, it's like photo math, like processors will go insane. So you definitely don't wanna do that. But all you have to do to remember is that you gotta look at this, uh, this script right here. That is a two, it's a positive two. So this makes it really easy. So instead, so all you have to do is you have to move the decimal point. If it's positive, we're moving it this way. How many places? Two places. So we're gonna take 52, we're gonna take the number 52, just like that, and we are going to, here's the decimal point where it's supposed to be, because here's where the decimal point is, because there's no, there's no numbers after it, so they just dropped them off. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna say one zero, put a placeholder in, that's one jump. How many jumps do we need to make? Two. So I take a second jump, and now that's my new number. So 50, uh, 52 times 10 to the second power will equal 5,200. You got it? There you go. Or another thing you can do is that you can go ahead and say, already right, there's, there's already one zero. If you want to get rid of this, this script up here, you can just go ahead and say, now I have two zeros and just times it. You can do that too. Either way is fine, but this one's a little bit more complicated because you're gonna have to be like rewriting stuff. So it's just easier just to jump. You just gotta say it, you know where the decimal point is, jump to, you get the right answer. You're all set. Number two, if A equals one half and B equals one third, then A, B, oh, it's a butt cheek problem. Cause they are stuck together. And since they are stuck together, that's times in between. So really your problem looks like this. A times B. And say, and since that's what our problem really looks like, now we can write it in a way that would make sense for us. So if we're gonna do it like this, all we gotta do is say one over two, because that's what A is. A equals one over two or one half. And then we have times B, which is one over three, one third. And then we get our photo math out because they do not have the same numbers on the bottom. And I don't want you doing them, um, I don't want you to worry about that right now. Just do it off your tool. And if you don't have your tool already, where is your tool? <sighs> so make sure you have your tool out so that you are ready to do the calculations with me. So go ahead and put in one, put in your fraction and put one half times, put in your fraction symbol, whoops. Totally messed that one all up, guys. I'm sorry. It's times, and I'm putting my fraction symbol again, and I'm going to put in one over three. So my answer is one sixth. Now, could you have done that? Yes, you could. Yes, yes, you could have done it. And yes, I have faith in you that you could do it. But here is the problem that I have with that: is that when you start getting into numbers on top, numbers on the bottom, it, I just when you're seeing fractions, please use your tools. You'll get to the point where you, you know, you get out of using your tools and you can understand all this. But for right now, until we can get some manipulative practice in there, please just do it this way. All right, number three. Whew, you know what this time is. This was a butt cheek problem. This one is a PEMDAS, PEMDAS. So I'm gonna put in my PEMDAS because it's order of operation. PEM, DAS. 
okay? So it's parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. You know it, you got it, live it. Yes. So right here, we have another problem. We have another issue. And the issue is having that one half. Up here, since there's two fractions, we just did it with our tool and call it a day. This one over here is a little bit more complicated because it's added to some parentheses and that fraction does make things more difficult, okay? So we're gonna get rid of that fraction. How do we get rid of a fraction? We make it a decimal. So let's go ahead and just make this a decimal and call it a day. So we just take and we make it a, we just go ahead and complete the problem. So we have one divided by two. So get your tool out and go one divided by two. One divided by two equals 0.5. Whoops, not 0 0.05, 0 0.5. Since we know that's 0 0.5, all we gotta do is come over here and put 0 0.5 parentheses, four times two. Oh, here's another one. We got that stupid dot in there that means times. I understand it looks like a decimal point. Why they keep doing it, I don't know. You just gotta recognize it. When you see it, that means times. Lots of things mean times. It's like times is a very popular, popular type of calculation. Okay, so do we need our tool for four times two? I don't know because did we even look at PEMDAS yet? No, so let's go ahead and look at PEMDAS. Boom, parentheses. Do I have anything inside the parentheses I can do? Yes, I do. So because of that, I'm gonna do this part of the problem right first. So I jumped the gun on that, I'm sorry, my bad. So what I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to do this part of the parentheses, four times two. So since we're gonna do some skip count and we'll do some practice in skip count. So put up your four and then skip count two. Two, four, six, eight. There you go. So my answer to two times four is eight. Now do I have to keep the parentheses? Yes, I do because they're butt cheek together. They're stuck together, so that means times, right? So we have another times problem right here. But we have to go through PEMDAS because we want the little tornado and we want it to be correct. So because of that, do I have any more parentheses I can do anything with? No. Do I have any exponents? No. Do I have multiplication? Yes, yes I do. I have 0.5 times eight. Get your tool out, get your calculation in. So I have 0.5, times eight. And because we start working on understanding fractions and decimals, when we times those two together, guess what? That became a smaller number, isn't that crazy? So there is my answer, because 0.5 times eight equals four. So I only have one number left, so that means that my tornado is done. But let's go over and make sure. Any more multiplication? No. Any more division? No. Any more addition? No. Any more subtraction? No. We're finished. What is the reciprocal of seven fifths? I told you about this last week. We had one of these last week. Do you remember? Do you remember? Do you remember the answer? Let's see. So reciprocal means that you switch. You took the bottom number on the top and the top number on the bottom. That means reciprocal. So all you need to do is because the five is on the bottom, we're going to move that to the top. And then that seven is on the top, we're going to move it to the bottom. Simple. That was super, super, super simple. So we're good there. Excellent. Going down to number five, I want to push this up a little bit so that I can save some paper because I have room. Okay, so we're reducing 12 over 36. Now, in this situation, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to pull out our magic number. So let's go over our magic numbers. Okay, so our first magic number is 2, 3, and 5. Since they're not 5s, we don't got to worry about that. So no 5s. Because there, you can't. It's not counting by fives. It's not skip counting by fives. So you don't have to worry about it. But here's the thing too, is that I know something special about those numbers because I know my multiplication tables. But to keep it simple for all of us, to make sure we just continue on doing what we're supposed to be doing, let's go ahead and see if three will work 
or if two will work? Which one do you guys want to try? The twos or the threes? Hmm. I don't know. Let's see. Let's, let's just go with the twos and just keep doing the twos until we don't get any numbers left. Because this is our safest one. If we can do the twos, we should just do the twos. So what we're going to do is we're just going to keep, we're going to keep dividing that number by two until we get nothing. So we're going to divide 12 divided by two and 36 divided by two. So get your calculators out. So I've got, let's go ahead and clear my board. I got 12 divided by two, which is six. So I have six over 36 divided by two. So I go over my calculations. I do 36 divided by two and I have 18. Now, can I do it again? Yes, I can. So I go ahead and I say six divided by two, 18 divided by two. And then I get a new number. So I'm just keeping reducing and reducing just using the magic numbers, All right? So let's go ahead and it's gonna be six divided by two, which is three. And then I have 18 divided by two. 18 divided by two equals nine. Now this one's pretty low. I mean, these are pretty low, but we have one more magic number we could use because we bought, we were not gonna use fives because we're not counting by fives. Okay, we can't do it by twos anymore because you can't divide these two numbers by two and make it a, a, a whole number, but we do have threes left. So as long as it divides into three down here, then we can do it one more time by one more magic number. So let's see, because if we don't, we just leave a three nines, but let's try our last magic number to see if that works. So three divided by three. If you have three cookies and you have three people, each person is getting one cookie. I'm not even doing that calculation because that's crazy. All right, and then nine divided by three. We're gonna take our calculator and do nine divided by three, and that's an even number. Now, can we divide one anymore? No, since we can't divide one anymore and make it like a even number, we're done. So our answer to reducing 12 over 36 is one third. Ooh, that was, that was gorgeous. Okay, so I know it got messy right here and I'm sorry, but that's one third. Just take your three magic numbers and keep doing it until you get it where you can't divide it anymore. Once you can't divide it anymore, you're done. You don't gotta worry about it. Now to check it, all you have to do on photo math is you have to put uh, it in your fraction and just put it as a fraction and it will tell you if it can be uh, reduced anymore and it says one third, so we are correct. Coronavirus way, done. Tool way, done, achieved. Now what we can do, oh, and by the way, I totally remembered my tape, so exciting. So let's go ahead and flip this over and see if we can get ourselves the rest of these done in a super extremely amazing way. Cause that first part was really nice guys. That was really fun. So let us go ahead, let's keep going. Put this right here on the edge. All right, now of course we're probably gonna have some um, perimeter questions cause they usually put one on the end. So we'll see if we can fit that in there. All right, so yeah, we got a perimeter question on the end. So let's see if we can get that over far enough. Nope, I'm gonna have to, yeah, actually I kind of got it in there. Okay, cool. All right, so this first one here, sorry, my hair is wet, so I'm constantly playing with it. Okay, write five and one fourth as an improper fraction. Now you can literally just put this in photo math and it'll tell you the answer, just literally. So let's do that to make it simple for ourselves at first. So we have five, and then we're gonna do a fraction of one over four. And it tells us that it is 21 over four. Okay, now what does it look like? Okay, that, that's important that you know what it looks like so you, I mean, so you can kind of understand where they're going with it. So let's go ahead and let's draw it out. All right, let's draw it out first. So we have five, Folds. One, two, three, four, five. And then we have uh, a fourth over here left over. And I'll just do the whole thing. I don't have to worry about it. I'll just color it in. There we go. So you have one left over. So you have four here, four here, four here, four here, and four here. And all of these are, are colored in. You have them. You have these pieces. And since you have all these pieces, first off, if it's pizza, you're having a great night. So you have all these pieces. 
And what they want you to do is that the four on the bottom stays because it's still cut in fours. Since it's still cut, the cut the, the, the hole is still cut into four pieces, that stays. They just want to know how many pieces of the fours you have. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. That's it. That is it. That is how so ridiculously easy that is. That's it. Draw it out if you don't understand it. If you don't got your tool, draw it out. So let's go on. What is the perimeter of the triangle? Now, you guys are going to have a hard time seeing this, so I'm going to draw it again. So the, uh, it's over here, so you guys can see the whole thing. Because you can kind of see it over there, but it's not really. And my drawing leaves a lot to be desired. And Oh my gosh, it didn't go onto my wall. Good. So this side is 8, this side is 12, this side is 10. If we're going to do perimeter, all we have to do is take the sides and do what with them? What are we going to do with it? We're going to add it. Okay, so we're going to take the 12, we're going to add that. We're going to take the 10, add that. We're going to take the 8, whoa, sorry, 10. <laughs> we're going to take the 8 and add that. And then that's all we're going to do. That's all you got to do. You're not adding those little, that little uh, bit inside. You're just adding the outside lines. So get our tool out. You're going to do 12 plus 10 plus 8. And our answer is 30. Excellent. And if we want to do it the long crone way, 2 plus 8. So you have 8. And then you do two more, gives you 10. So we go put the zero down here, carry the one, and then we have one, two, three. And there you are, Corona way, tool way, we got it, we've achieved. Now we want to write one third as a decimal, we got this. We've been doing this for weeks, it's so awesome. Because we know that one third is equal to one, divided by three. And that's your problem. So you know this is one divided by three. It's another way of saying that, instead of just saying one third. So you just get your tool out and you go one divided by three. And it's a fun one because it's 0 0.33333333 all the way out to the parking lot. So instead of writing all those numbers out, what do we do? Say it out loud. I know, I know it's embarrassing. I'm talking to a camera right now in the dark. So seriously, if someone's embarrassed about their situation, it should be me, not you. Right, if it is, all you do is put a little line over top of it like that, and that means repeated. That means that shows people that are smart with math that that is three and it just repeats all forever. Good. All right, what is the area? So let's go to the next one. What is the area of a box? That is, so we're looking for area. So if we're gonna be looking for area, we're looking for, cut, we're cutting this up into little school, like all those little boxes. And so we're gonna do eight by four by two. Okay, all right, all right. So that gives us three numbers. What are we gonna do then? Oh my gosh, we're so like confused, right? No, we're not that confused. Cause all you have to do is if you got a box and they want the area of the box, they're looking for all the flat sides. And they already tell you what to do. They say eight times four times eight. And that's how they want you to do it. I think so. I think that's correct. I think it's right. So let me try that one more time just, just to make sure. Because something seems wrong about that. Because the dimensions seem a little bit off. So let me read it again. What is the area of a box that is eight by four, by two. Ah, Miss Cheer made a mistake. Let's celebrate our mistake for a second. Mm, mm, celebration. Mm. Has mistakes, let us learn. All right, so make sure not to rush through it. That's my biggest problem right now. All right, so we have eight times four times two, which we can do right here on our calculator. Do eight times four times two. So our answer, uh, it's going to run off my paper, so I'll do it on here. 64. There you go. 
And that will tell you, and the answer, whatever unit it is, is gonna be squared because it's area. So remember that later, because that'll be important later. Okay, so now we have a sequence of numbers. So they wanna know this last problem. We got this, we're almost there. So they, want, they have a sequence. They want it as a, a arithmetic sequence or a ge geometric sequence. Now, this one here, I was a little confused about this one too, because it's not, I've never actually heard it called arithmetic sequence. Um, I had, it was a different type of, uh, it was like a, um, what was the other word for it? Process, I think. And that made a lot more sense to me. So I did look that up to make sure that I was correct. What it is, is this arithmetic uh, sequence means it's going up by one particular number. Okay, so it's being, like you're adding a certain amount to each time. So it's 10, 13, 16, 19. The reason why I know this is a arithmetic system, arithmetic system, is because it's going up by what? If you do 10 plus three, you get 13. 13 plus three equals 16. 16 plus three equals 19. That makes it, since it's going up by plusing it by a particular number, you can also do it by minusing a particular number. That makes it this one. If we were looking at a geometric sequence, that's our other option over here. If we were looking at that, then the numbers would be like, say, 10 times three. Because then it would be times instead of plus, and it would be, it would be 10, then 30, then it would keep going up by, uh, by 10 or like a square. So in that situation, you're going up um, uh, by, a group of, by a group of measurement instead of just by, by a single measurement, okay? It's kind of like the perimeter of the, the, perimeter of the triangle here. You're only looking for this singular line, okay? If we are doing an area, that is more of a geometric sequence. If the area is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, that's a geometric sequence. So we'll go over that more when I have base 10 blocks in front of me because you'll really understand it better if I show it to you like that, okay? So just take my word for it. If it goes up by, if it's adding it, then it's the A word. If it is, um, and not that A word, get, that, get your mind out of the gutter. Um, if it goes up by timesing something, then it's gonna be the geometric, the G word, okay? Just for right now, and I accept the fact that you might not understand that right this second, but that's okay, we won't, it won't kill you. We'll wait till we get back to fall. It'll give us something to learn when we get back. So that's the end of the uh, math minute for tonight, or at least the first one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get myself set back up and get that second one done, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much. You have a beautiful rest of your day, and stay safe, stay healthy.